Welcome back to Versus, the show where we compare and contrast two kind of different games. But in this case, we're actually comparing an old edition of Lagrania to the new deluxe master set of Lagrania coming out from Board and Dice. Now, yeah. yeah, this is, I would say, a classic Euro game. Yeah, this is a classic Euro game. The original came out in 2014. This is one of my sort of early gems. Lagrania yeah. is a game that a lot of people are familiar with, but there's a lot of people who aren't terribly familiar with it because it's kind of an, uh, a lost gem, if you will, I think. I, think, I don't think it gets I, I enough would, attention. I would agree because a lot of people that came into the hobby, especially later, 2016, 17, 18, probably, a lot of them haven't gone back to play. But honestly, this game brought in a lot of mechanics that you see reflected in more modern games. I mean, this is one of the first to do something like the dice drafting and multi-use cards I, that I've seen in other games since. But I don't think really before Lagrania. Yeah, I mean, Lagrania brought a lot of things together. And this video, by no means, is going to tell you how to play Lagrania <laughs> in detail. Uh, safe to say, though, it is a very robust Euro. Uh, and it has a few mechanics, like Ryan just alluded to, that I thought, at least when I played it, I had never seen them done quite like this before. And two of the ones that I want to focus on, just to let you know. And this is about basically managing a farm, taking your goods, doing different things with, it, with them, taking yeah. them to a market and basically trying to do that over six rounds. But the two mechanics that were most captivating to me was one, the multi-use cards. Now, multi-use cards is not a new thing by any means, sure. but I will say there's very few games I've ever seen in no, my entire no. life that use multi-use cards like this game. Uh, show them the player board. Now, this is the new player yeah, board. Yeah, this is an awesome we'll, we'll new compare player these board. in a minute, but the new player board will give you an idea of how these multi-use cards are used because at the beginning of every round you, you're playing one of these cards yeah. typically and it can go in one of several different places yeah, it can go here, across the top of the board it can go here, on the bottom of the board and to the right off to the side over here and the left off to the side over here and yeah, i can tell you each four of those locations use the card in a different way in fact they slide underneath the board so that the board only displays what you need to know from the card depending on where you played it. Um, across the top, these are going to be uh, market burrows yeah. that you're going to like fulfill. Like little objectives almost. Personal contracts yeah. that you can fulfill with the goods that you're creating. The bottom, think like helpers and workers that, uh, you know, from Agricola yeah, variable or Caverna. Player powers. Variable player powers that give you things. And then on the left and right, the left are going to effectively just be your fields for things like olives and grapes yep. and wheat and then on the right this is going to kind of modify your farm these kind of like upgrade your farm yep. so that you're making more income so that it gives you some flexibility to make a little more deliveries deliveries things like that yeah and just from that if you're already like oh that sounds that's great. just the multi-use i mean this is, this is yeah that's just like one aspect of this game it also is combined with dice drafting which it uses Kind of like Grand Osher Hotel, yeah. where when you roll those dice, you place them out on the board in different spaces, and they give you different things. Now, you know, Grand Osher came after this. I would say that yeah. this could have even influenced that a little bit. And you're also competing for different market spaces to control a little bit of area, area control. control. So there's there's actually a lot happening in this game. So I think it's it's great actually uh, that Board and Dice has chosen this one to get that deluxe master treatment. They've done this before. They did it with, with Edo. Edo came out. They this is a very similar kind of experience that you got with Edo as far as how the upgrades work. But we really wanted to kind of talk about the differences that we're seeing, at least between the old and the new version of Lagrania. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, somewhat would say superficial differences. I personally think those are very important. And what I'm talking about here is the graphic design, the artwork. The sizes of things, for sure. Yeah, you and can, we can just see that right away. Yeah. I mean, look at this difference in the size this of the board. Here is the main board from the original game. First of all, you can see the difference in size. Uh, this one is a little cramped. And what I've always said about this game, as much as I love Lagrania, it's like 18 shades of beige here. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I mean, there is some color there, but there's a lot to take in in a little amount of space. This board really brings it to life, like you were saying earlier. I love it. Yeah, all these. It's got people the walking people, around doing things. Everything all these is just buildings are on the little, outside. It's a little roomier. It gives you some space to breathe, and it's really, you know, a really good sized board. Well, and I'll say that we, that the upgrade here is also functional. The graphic design. They've cleaned up some of the icons, so it's brand new icons for everything. They've just changed the way that some of this information is presented. Though the rules haven't changed a lot, the way that no. the board looks has, and you'll even notice there's some sections like. Here on the old board, you, oh, know, yeah. you used to put your tokens out to kind of score these different areas, and they've actually pulled those off of the market. Yeah, it got a little confusing before. Sections, 
Right, and I think that that's just an ease of play thing, right? That, For sure. And just by making this board a little, like, giving it a little space to breathe, it doesn't look so intimidating when you're looking at it. No, I, I totally agree. This has got a lot going on, and I do think that's probably the one quality of life thing that I think is most interesting. And it may sound like a little thing, but it was very confusing when you were scoring your area control, and some of these spaces got confused for the things that you were counting up. Well, that's, I mean, sure, that is one of the great quality of life upgrades, but so is the player board. Oh, yeah. I mean, by having this player board be bigger, for one thing, again, you can spread out all this information. And by placing, uh, having these like dual layered sections here where you can place these tokens. Well, not to, not because to mention actually, those tokens are shaped differently. Well, sure. Right? Yeah. Because in the baseboard, they're all just squares. Yeah. And they're cardboard in the original game. Right. And so like that, that just makes it easier at a glance to see what's going on on your board. Plus the dual layer allows it to sit off of the table. Yeah. I'm going to tell big... you right now, you probably can't see this on camera, but these are my original boards. And I actually took little felt tabs <laughs> and put them on the, strategically place them on here so that it would sit the board a little off the table. That's a, that's a smart idea, So you actually. can kind of tuck cards underneath otherwise it. Otherwise you're lifting that Otherwise board you're lifting it quite a bit. This one takes that a next step because it, it lifts it, but it also has spaces so that when you slide the card in, it stops where it's supposed to stop. Yeah. Like, that is really nice for a game where you have a board where you're going to be tucking cards under all four right, sides. I mean, constantly tucking cards under. And so, yeah, it's quality of life, but it's also just a little nicer to have that feel. Like, there's little uh, die-cut spots to place the dice here. I mean, yeah. it just it just has has a better tac tactile feel uh, with the upgraded components and the, uh, these roof tiles that are going to be actually like wood in the game. Like, it just feels better. Better to play. Yeah, across the board, and this is what, like yeah. Ryan mentioned, the Edo Deluxe Master Set. There, it's like a spare no expense sort of situation. Every little bit has a really oh, yeah. nice touch to it. I think I don't know about all the components, but almost every, oh, every piece component. like this is yes. going to be a nice thick little piece of wood token that you're going to place down, oh. going to fit into a space. But they all got an upgrade. All the components got like they, they just look and feel better. Yeah, and not to mention before we move on from the board, the new one is also double sided. So this one, you're going to be able to flip over, play one to two player. And yeah. this side is the three to four player mode where you're going to be covering up some of these if you're in a three player mode. But that's just sort of, like I said, the, the paint and finish to the thing, those sorts of improvements. The other improvements here is there's a ridiculous amount of content, game content and oh, modules. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's obviously a huge difference. I mean, this game uh, did never got really expansions. No, which it, which it, it really needed expansions. It could. It it it, it could use them yeah, it for could sure. Have definitely There's used a them. lot of game right here. Oh, there is, and there's, there's a, a lot of game right here. But the fact that they went back and they went back to the uh, Odi, who's the yeah. designer of Lagrania, they went to him to to design some of these expansions, but not just him. <laughs> like they actually went to some some pretty big. Names. Adam Kropinski. Adam Kropinski. Uh, Stefan Feld. Stefan Feld. Now, we can't tell you about all of them, but we can tell you about the modules that we've heard of. And we'll we'll mention a couple in a little bit more detail. But there are going to be six modules to begin with. And I think there are going to be quite I a think few more some unlocked. stretch goals, probably. There's going to be a few more that's, that are unlockable during the campaign. But I can tell you, just even a couple of the modules we've seen yeah. are significant. Uh, the, the one from Adam is bustling. Yeah, the one from Adam, Bustling Town, is adds a lot of variability. And it adds a lot. Is, is one thing that this game maybe is is missing is some variability because you're kind of playing with the same, you know, dice actions over here every time you play. These are considered like uh, the revenue, revenue spaces. spaces. So all of these expansions come with components and we've had them in little envelopes here. But you're actually going to be able to put out new tiles yeah, to these change are, these up. And so just so you know, super... these, these are um, prototype components. Oh, yeah. Uh, we don't, it, it, but it's we we have a fairly nice prototype, but prototype say, it's the nice prototype on components. So you're actually able to switch up all of these revenue spaces and place little buildings out on the board as well, which kind of again gives... nice thick pieces of wood. Oh, yeah. And each of these buildings has an associated card with it that has a power. Now we didn't go into the details of how you play, but you are going to be placing when you deliver to the market. You're going to be placing your markers in these hexes. Now. Another thing you can do uh, is build a building. This is one of the new actions here in the revenue spaces. When you build a building, you're going to build it in the intersection of three of those spaces. And during sort of the scoring phase, you're going to be getting the effect of that building for whoever sort of controls the three hexes around that building, or everyone if it's, if it's split evenly. Yeah, and it's just, again, these modules are add-ons. 
right? I mean, they're not required to play the game, but they do bring so much flavor, especially for people like us who have played this game a lot. Yeah. Coming back to it with these new modules is just fun, especially because some of these modules were actually designed, I don't want to say to make the game more fun or satisfying, but to make the game a little easier. Like the hired hands expansion gives you little workers that you can send out to just get more stuff a little easier. And Odie actually designed one called Long Distance Trading, which adds a trade board, like a foreign trade board, that you could just sell directly to. So if you're struggling to make your contracts or maybe you don't even really want to worry about completing contracts, you can start selling your goods off to this other board. And these are things that feel like he's thought about this game a lot over the years and really like organically added these in. Yeah, the interesting thing about his designs, if you've never played this or Cooper Island, for example, yeah. but this in particular, I can speak to this, just like those modules Ryan was mentioning, the base game itself does a lot of things to give the players a lot of flexibility. And the brilliant thing about that is for enthusiast gamers, particularly gamers who are like medium to medium heavyweight games, yeah. is all that flex flexibility actually gives you a lot more to think about. So it makes it a much thinkier game, while at the same time giving the players flexibility so that the turns can all be far more satisfying. Because one of the things about Lagrania, when you take your turns, there's a bunch of free actions <laughs> right. that you can take. And you can take a lot of those free actions and it can like make the turn really long. But a lot of what they've added to the game here takes that same philosophy of adding more so it sounds like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be, is this gonna be too much game? But the flexibility that those things offer kind of balances that out, I think. Yeah, especially with the ability to mix and match these modules based yeah. on your play, playing style or, or the, the table group that you have. Because people that are really familiar with Agrania, that, that have, are very experienced, you could probably add on multiple, multiple modules. You can, you can and, mix and match. And just really change the base experience. Yeah, I know. I'm, speaking out of turn here, I don't know that you could use all of them. And quite frankly, I don't know that you would want to. I'm That's not a lot. sure I would want to use. I you would you ever want to try just try that? I might one time. But I it's know like, some players who would want to do that. Well, I mean, I I don't even know what the total number of modules are. There's going to be a lot. Even of the modules. six that we know about, right? Even if we used all six of these at the same time, I think that would be quite quite the experience. I mean, it would be fun to do, but I would I wouldn't want anyone at that table that is not very familiar with Lagrania. Yeah, and the other cool thing when you're mixing and matching, or where you just whether you're picking one. Uh, there are some things that some modules that do different things. There's one called Betwixt yeah. that adds a lot more interactivity to the game. So there's not a lot of that in the game as it is, other than the area control. Right. But the Detw the Betwixt module adds a lot more direct player interaction, which I know is a lot of things a lot of heavier gamers are looking for. Me personally, not so much. Right. I might not play with Betwixt, but it's cool that it's there because depending on the group you have at the table, you can kind of say. This module does this sort of thing. This module does this sort of thing. And everyone at the table can go, okay, let's do this, this, and this. Right. Or just one. Or let's right, play right. base I, Legrand. Yeah. Like, oh, we've put a lot of, you know, a lot of, like, with the hired hands. We've played that a lot. Let's let's not use the hired hands yeah. this time. Let's mix it up a little bit. And I think that allows the game to hit the table more. Plus, of course, kind of like they did uh, with the last game, it's just by making everything so gorgeous, it's, it's easy to want to play it. Well, that's the thing that I want to finish up on is going back to sort of that superficial look and feel to it. I, As much as I love Lagrania, it is going to make it far easier for me to get it out to the table, knowing that when you put this on the table, other people at the table are going to be... It's just an impressive thing to look at. I think aesthetics are a big part of my experience in particular, yeah. and I think that's, if nothing else, one thing that's going to get sort of the deluxe master set to the table more than the original version for me. Well, yeah, and one more thing, one actually thing that you didn't mention. They actually reached out to a lot of people that really love this game to help work on some of the cards and do development on some of the cards. Oh, I, I one did, of those people. It was me. I did. I was lucky enough to contribute a couple ideas for a couple new cards. I honestly don't know if that's part of the base game or in one of the modules or what. But yeah, it was really fun. That was a really special thing to be a part of. Um, as much content as we do and as many games as we yeah. played. To be able to be even just a tiny, tiny little part of a game that I love so much was really cool. And now your name is right by Stefan Feld's. In the I mean, book, so. I wouldn't say that it's, I wouldn't put it that it's way, a little but bit it, under is it. Cool, it is cool that I got that opportunity. So yeah, so thanks for watching today as we kind of broke down the differences. Uh, hopefully this is enough for you to make up your own mind. If you already own Lagrania, I know that's a little harder decision <laughs> sure. to upgrade. But if, you're, if you've never played Lagrania, I mean, this is the time to, to get in on this. For sure. I get this deluxe set because, you know, I, honestly, Bordenets can come up with one of these every year. And as long as they keep nailing it, like I think they have the, with Edo in this game, 
I think I'll, I think this could be a, a running thing for them. Oh, hopefully. for sure. The the concept is great. You take a good classic game that may not get as much table play as it does these days, and do something like this to it, and it's just going to inject new life for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, guys, we'll see you next time. Thank you for liking, subscribing, watching our videos, and as always, until we see you next time, keep having fun at the table. Bye bye. Congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.